Hi, my name is Hannah Jane and I work for the Johnson County Library at the Leewood Branch. And I am here today to talk about books along with a few librarian pals who have joined me. Before we talk about books, I wanted to share a few exciting library things. The first thing I wanted to talk about is how to get a library card if you do not have one. You can get a library card in two different ways. The first way is by going to our website jogolibrary.org and signing up for an e-card. With an e-card you will have access to e-books, e-audio books, streaming video, and databases and homework help, lots of different things. The second way you can get a library card is by going to one of our branches and signing up for a card there. You will need to have a guardian with you if you are under the age of 16 and they will need to have a photo ID and proof of address. With a physical library card, you will be able to check out all of our physical content, such as the books and CDs, DVDs, along with our digital content. The next thing I wanted to talk about is Elementia. Elementia is the library's teen literary magazine, and issue 18 comes out in April. There will be a virtual reception that you can register for on our website. It will be April 23rd at 7 p.m. Each Elementia has a theme, and this year's theme is all about bodies. Fran and Choi will be the keynote speaker for the event. You can submit writing and art for issue 19 beginning May 1st. We also invite you to join our Young Adult Literary Council, which meets first and third Sundays at 2 p.m. We do lots of exciting things, such as play games, author visits, and share books. It's a great way to connect with other teens. Lastly, be sure to check out our teen page on our website. On that page, you can submit reviews, two hours a piece, volunteer credit for each review that you submit. You can also submit an application to share an artistic skill for Teens Create and find book recommend recommendations and other reviews. There will also be a sticker contest and a short story contest coming up soon, so be on the lookout for that. Okay, let's talk about books. So the first book I wanted to talk about is Undefeated by Steve Shinken. Steve Shinken writes narrative nonfiction, which is nonfiction that reads like a novel. So it's super engaging, it's just like reading a story, but it's all about history. And Undefeated is the story of Jim Thorpe, who is a Native American athlete and Olympic gold medalist. And it's also the story of Pop Warner, who was his coach and he was a football mastermind. And it's, it's a little bit of like their relationship as well. It is also the story of the bittersweet history of the Carlisle Indian school and their football team. There's a little bit of Native American history thrown in there and a little bit of the history of football, which is way more compelling than I would have ever thought. So as it turns out with football, a lot of the rules were created because people were getting injured and even killed. And so that part really surprised me. Um, this is such a great book. And to top it off, there are lots and lots of pictures. So it is available as e-audio and e-book. I highly recommend if you listen to the audio, going back through and looking at the pictures and the football diagrams, um, because it, it's just a truly um, excellent part of the book. It adds so much. So that's Undefeated by Steve Shinken. And let's see here. The next book I want to talk to you about is The Scourge. And this is by Jennifer A. Nielsen. You may recognize her as the author of the Ascension series. Um, the Scourge is actually a standalone book, and uh, it, is, it is an exciting read. It's the story of Annie, who belongs to the river people, and they are treated terribly by the townspeople. So they pretty much keep to themselves because... They, they don't they don't want to be treated terribly, so they, they keep to themselves. And it's a huge shock when Annie is captured and tested for this disease that is rapidly killing everyone. She is also deeply suspicious when she tests positive because, like I said, they hang out by themselves. They try not to, to they try not to mingle with the townspeople very much. So she's super suspicious 
about this disease um, that she's tested positive for. Now, I know you're thinking, <laughs> we're, we're in the middle of a pandemic right now. Why would I want to read a book about, you know, a plague? Uh, but this plague is just a little bit different. Um, and it's, I won't give away too much. It's a little bit different. It's totally, it's totally an exciting read. It had me on the edge of my seat the entire time I read it. I read it pretty much in two sittings, which never happens for me. Um, so Annie, when she's tested positive, along with her best friend Weevil, and that really is his name, Weevil, great name, they are sent to Attic Island, which is this quarantine colony. And it is as dreadful as it sounds. So she has a lot of attitude and she's super intelligent and that's kind of a great combination. It makes for a very interesting character. She questions everyone and everything and as you're reading it, you're wondering, is this going, is this going to be the end of her or is this going to be the thing that helps her survive? Because she's dealing with evil wardens, starvation, injustices against her people, even in the quarantine colony, which is crazy, and the all-consuming pain of the disease. So she's got a lot she's battling. Though this is a very bleak read, um... Annie and Weevil's friendship is just this constant light throughout the darkness, and it was my favorite thing about The Scourge. Uh, this is available in ebook and e audio, and I uh, highly recommend it. Okay, the next book that I would like to talk about is A Time to Dance, and this is written by Padma Vingatraman. And it is written in verse, and it reads just like a dance, which is what A Time to Dance is all about. A Time to Dance is about Vita, who is a dancer, and her life revolves around Indian classical dance. Sorry, classical Indian dance. And, I mean, it's her whole life. And her talent for this, is, I mean, she's exceptionally talented in it, and she's starting to get really good. So that's starting to cause some challenges. So she has the rivalry with other dancers, um, distance from her friends, and anger from her mom, who wants her to be an engineer. So she's got a lot going on. But all of these challenges fade into the background when she wakes up hospitalized after her van crashes and her lower right leg is missing. So... Now she's having to deal with like completely learning how to walk again and how to dance again. And so a large part of A Time to Dance is about how Vita handles um, this huge loss. But it's also about her journey back into dance and herself. It's a beautifully written book. I found myself jotting down lots of lines because they were just so... Just so beautifully written. Um, I will share a favorite line with you, and that is, I can dance beauty into my body. And that's just a really great way to think about dancing. So, yeah, A Time to Dance, Padma Vinkatram. And let's see here. What else do I have? Look. I have, the next book is I Love You So Mochi, and this is by Sarah Kun. And this is the story of Kimmy, who's a Japanese-American, and she gets in this huge fight with her mom over her life and what she wants to be. And her mom sends her to um, Japan to visit her grandparents. And so while she's there, she meets this boy, Akira, and how she meets him is incredibly adorable. So he is dressed as a moshi, um, as a piece of moshi. And so, uh, yeah. And so they, of course, become fast friends. And he shows her all over Kyoto. He's got his own issues, though, too. He wants to become a doctor, but he can't figure out how he's going to pay for college. So that's... That's a pretty heavy thing to carry. And so they're both helping each other through their issues. Meanwhile, he's showing her all over Kyoto. And she's also getting to know her grandparents, who are delightful, super quirky, just all around great grandparents. Um, I smiled so much when I read this. My face hurt. It is it is one of those books that will just make you feel good. Um, Kimmy's enthusiasm and love for all things 
that are pretty and beautiful and exciting. Her enthusiasm is totally infectious. Um, great book. Highly recommend it. And I've got one last book that I would like to share with you, and this is called The Giver by Lois Lowry, and it's a graphic adaptation by P. Craig Russell. So if you've read The Giver series and loved it, you should definitely check this out. For those of you who haven't read The Giver, um, The Giver is about Jonas, who is slowly unraveling the terrible secrets of his utopian world um, when he is assigned to be the apprentice of The Giver. Um, because The Giver was one of my favorite books as a kid, I was so skeptical about reading this because I don't know if you guys are the same way, but whenever I read something and love it and they do, you know, an adaptation or spinoff, I'm like, this better be perfect. It has to be perfect. Um, and so I was super skeptical uh, whenever I first saw this. But I started flipping through the pages and as I flipped through the pages, I was like, okay, I have to give this a try. So the way, if you um, pick up this book at the library, you should do the same thing because it's super cool. Um, how do I explain this? So uh, the color changes as you flip through the pages. Um, the saturation and the frequency both change and um, it's just like the story but it's like brought to life which is kind of eerie and beautiful and amazing and so that was the reason why I'm like I have to give this a chance and so um, it follows the original story pretty closely I couldn't really discern any large differences um, there isn't as much text I think as the original or it didn't read that way but there is still quite a bit of text and it's really tiny so you will probably get a little bit of a headache when you're reading it but it's totally worth it. Um, the characters were as I imagined them mostly except for the giver. Um, <laughs> the, the giver was a little bit different for me. Um, he looks a little bit like a creepy convict in the graphic adaptation, but um, he's, he's more clean cut and less Dumbledore-like, which makes sense because everything about the story suggests that the giver that graced the original books would not have been acceptable in their society. So scenes where the giver lays his hands on Jonas's back in the bathing of the elderly citizens I thought were also tastefully done and um, just really well done. Lowry actually mentions, mentions this in a brief interview at the end of the book. Um, there are two interviews at the end of the book. I highly recommend reading them. Um, one of them talks about Russell's creative process uh, of doing the adaptation, and I won't ruin it for you. I will say that he rips out every page of the original book to get started, and like what happens next will totally blow your mind. Um, so yeah, I could go on and on about this book. Uh, it was just, it was, it was like being my 10 year old self again, reading The Giver, but in an entirely different way and getting to meet all my characters again, um, all my favorite characters. So The Giver, um, the P. Russell, P. Craig Russell adaptation, highly recommend it. And that is all for me. So thank you so much for uh, joining me as I talk about some of my favorite books. I hope you guys have an awesome day and I will pass it along to the next person. Hi, my name is Tiffany and I am a youth information specialist at the Blue Valley Library in the Johnson County Library System. And today I'm here to talk about a great book called One Half from the East by Nadia Hashimi. This book is very, very good. Um, it is about a girl no named Obera who lives in Afghanistan and uh, she is part of a family that's doing very well in Kabul. She has sisters that she loves. Her father has a great job. Her life is very, very happy. Then as happens in books, something bad happens and her father becomes injured and he loses his leg and with that his job. And so Obeda and her family have to move out into rural Afghanistan um, and be supported by extended family members. So Obeda is ripped from her life in Kabul and ends up in rural Afghanistan. Um, one interesting thing about Afghanistani culture is that uh, boys are, are considered the pride of families, whereas girls are sometimes considered a burden. And because of this, um, Obeda's aunt suggests to the family that 
Obeda become a bocha posh. And a bocha posh is um, someone or a girl in Afghanistan who is changed into a boy via cross dressing. So they are, they have their hair cut, uh, they wear boys clothes, and they live as a boy uh, for um, years at a time in order to bring luck to their family because boys are, are thought to be lucky. Um, so Obeda is the youngest of her sisters, so it's thought that becoming a bocha posh would be easiest for her. Uh, so they cut her hair, she wears boys clothes, uh, girls and boys uh, attend separate schools in Afghanistan, so she moves from the girls school to the boys school. And it's a rough transition for Obeda. She loved being a girl, she loved dancing as a girl, she loved hanging out with her sisters. Um, Things take a turn for the better for uh, Obeda when uh, she uh, meets Rahim in uh, school and learns that he is a bocha posh as well. And he has been living as one for several years. Uh, Rahim is very sporty. Um, he loves living his life as a boy. Uh, he has a lot more freedom. And Obeda, who has become obeyed now, um, also learns to really enjoy that freedom. She enjoys climbing trees, she enjoys playing sports, she uh, enjoys roughhousing with the other boys. So she and Rahim form a very tight friendship and they begin looking for ways of uh, staying a bocha posh and not turning back into a girl later. So for many bocha posh, they, are, they live their life as a boy for years, a year, five years, 10 years, it depends on the family, but oftentimes they are then asked to return to living life as a girl. And with that, they lose a lot of the freedoms that they had as a boy. So as you might imagine, um, it is not always a wanted transition um, and it can be quite difficult. So this is the story of Obeda and her life as a girl and a boy, and then having to become a girl again. And it has a ton of interesting ideas to unpack. Um, it really makes you think about what it would be like um, to have fewer rights as a woman, what it would be like to live as a, a member of the opposite sex. Um, and it's just a heartfelt, wonderful story. Um, Obeda is part of a really great family and uh, it explores interesting family dynamics as well because, um, because boys are more prized. There was a lot of jealousy with her sisters. Um, because Obeda would get the better food and things like that. So uh, this is just a really stellar novel with so much, so many layers to it. And I highly recommend it. And when you read it, I really hope you enjoy it. Thanks so much for listening and happy reading. Hi, I'm Angelica Rife. I work for Johnson County Library and I would like to share a couple of great books with you today. Amina's Voice by Hannah Khan and When Stars Are Scattered by Victoria Jameson and Amar Muhammad. Both books are realistic fiction based on the life experience of their authors. And both books exponentially open up the world to us readers because uh, Hannah Khan is a Pakistani American author and uh, Omar Muhammad one of the authors of When Stars Are Scattered is a Somali who spent most of his life in Kenya, Africa. And uh, frankly, as an immigrant myself, I'm originally from Russia, I'm attracted to stories told by immigrants or first generation Americans because it's always interesting to compare my struggle and struggles and successes with struggle and successes of other people who moved to another country at some point of their lives. But even if you were born and raised in America, diverse books like this too is a great opportunity to look at the world from a different perspective. I mean, his voice is a gentle coming of age story written in first person. Amina is a very likable protagonist uh, who just started middle school last fall and she feels like a fish out of water. Uh, her best friend seems to replace Amina with another person. Amina has a beautiful voice, but she's so shy that she is too shy to sign up for a 
competition in her school to perform solo. And Amina's parents, being immigrants from Pakistan, keep embarrassing Amina and her older brother Mustafa with their culturally different ways of doing things. Plus, her father's older brother, um, being known for his conservative views, is coming from Pakistan to visit. And of course, everyone is worried if it would be safe for Amina's uncle to come because as one of the characters says, there is some bad feeling in this country toward Muslims. And then a tragedy strikes in the local Muslim community. Amina is petrified with fear. She realizes that all her previous worries are actually not nearly as significant as the feeling of being a target of someone's hatred and being vulnerable. Will Amina and her community find the means to restore the damage and who will help them on the way? Will Amina find her voice? You will find out if you read this book, Amina's Voice by Hannah Khan. While the setting of the first book is a typical community in the United States, the second book takes us to a big refugee camp in Kenya. Try to imagine living in a teeny tiny tent, no running water, not much food, not much of anything. But the main thing, no mom and dad. And what you think is just a temporary situation becomes your home and way of life for years. Pretty much all your childhood and youth. And that's the life of Omar and Hassan, his brother, who is almost nonverbal and has seizures. So Omar has to be responsible for himself and for his younger brother. So how do you survive in the most devastating of circumstances? Where do you find hope? What gives you power to get through another day? And just being a kid with, without much of support from anybody. When stars are scattered, is a gripping and yet sweet graphic novel. Memoir created by the New York Times bestselling author, Victoria Jameson, you might know her um, by her previous books, and Omar Muhammad, uh, the Somali man who lived this story. And now he is, uh, as well as his brother, they are in this country and Omar works as a uh, social worker and he helps refugees just like him. And he even helps the refugee camp where he and his brother spent so many years. So give this book a chance and you will see for yourself. It will be an unforgettable experience. And one more thing for the road. I would like to share with you one of my favorite places to go on our website, jokolibrary.org. And if you uh, just find the blue toolbar and there will be the word research on it. And then you go to homework, help for kids and find culture grams. And there'll be two editions, world edition and kids edition, explore both. They are so fascinating. So that would be a good resource for anybody who would like to learn more about this country as well as other countries of the world. Thank you and please enjoy the books and everything that the library has to offer. We librarians are there for you. Never forget that. Bye. Hi, I'm Kristen with the Johnson County Library. I'm a youth information specialist for the Lenexa City Center branch. I have two books I wanna share with you, but before I get started on the book talks, I wanna mention our online events. One of my favorite things about our website is how easy it is to check out what activities and programs the Johnson County Library has going on. 
go to jococo.org and then the events tab and finally online events. Click on the event you're interested in and then it'll let you know if you need to register for that particular event. Join us for an online event soon. Now on with the book talks. The first book I wanna share with you today is called The Brave by James Byrd. You can find this book in the J Fiction section. Night is my favorite time of day. Total darkness means total silence. When, when I lie in bed, I imagine I am normal. Colin Couch, a 13 year old boy from California has never fit in at school. His classmates don't understand his OCD or obsessive compulsive disorder, which has him counting every letter that is spoken to him. After Colin is kicked out of yet another school, his father doesn't know what to do with him. So he sends Colin to live on an Indian reservation in Minnesota with his mother, whom he's never met. It turns out to be the best decision he's ever made. Colin is welcomed wholeheartedly by his mom. He has even bonds with his neighbor, Orienda. She encourages him to be different. Different is good. It makes you unique. Colin wants to be brave in his new environment. Orienda guides his training on, on how he will learn to face his fears. Will Colin be up for the task when a real challenge comes? Bird has written a fantastic debut novel. He captures the characters and Native American value on bravery and courage. This book gives insight to a specific culture while also addressing the theme of wanting to be accepted for who you really are. I love how Bird imagined Orienda as a butterfly and Colin as a wolf. These are extensions of their personality and it was just fantastic. If you like Bridge to Terabithia by Katherine Patterson, or more recently, Something to Say by Lisa Moore Ramey, you'll enjoy The Brave. Okay, and my next book I wanna talk about is Turtle Boy by Evan M. Wolkenstein. And this also can be found in the J Fiction section. It's also available as an ebook or audiobook through Access 360. A story about, this is a story about what it means to be brave when all you want to do is hide in your shell. Everyone deserves a friend like Will Levine. And that was said by Lane Kelly, author of Song for a Whale. It's also on the front cover right there. Um, and in Evan Wolkenstein's debut novel, we meet Will Levine, a seventh grader who was bullied at school by being called Turtle Boy because of this different, different looking chin. Will's world changes when he begins to visit RJ, a 16-year-old boy in the hospital. He does this as part of his community service uh, leading up to his bar mitzvah. Will said, RJ constantly searched for new ways to send his mind and imagination outward to widen his circle of life. RJ teaches Will to come out of his shell by making connections and sharing creative energy. To overcome fear and frustration, RJ widens Will's circle of life. Um, I read in an interview uh, that Wolkenstein did with the Daily Nerd, with the Nerd Daily, that his inspiration for RJ actually came from Mr. Miyagi from the Karate Kid, um, and I thought that was super cool. And so this is what he says about it: Mr. Miyagi was firm but forgiving, clever and kind, but also critical when necessary, wise in the ways of the world, but with a sweet sense of humor. I wish I had someone like that in my life. Mr. Miyagi needed something too. He was lonely and isolated and far from the land he loved. Those things went into RJ. Will Sun does an amazing job capturing Will's voice and attitude as a middle schooler. As a reader, you are invested in his journey. You also really get to know the hearts of the secondary characters, which I loved. For those who like Wonder by um, RJ Lockio, you will be taken by this novel as well. Thank you so much and come visit us at the library soon. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Meg. I'm a youth librarian with Johnson County Library and I wanted to tell you about a teen book that I read that I cannot stop thinking about. It's the story of Will and Will loses his brother to gun violence right outside of their apartment building. Will's outside at the time that his brother is shot and killed but he doesn't see who pulls the trigger. Although Will believes it has to be Riggs. And then Will knows that he has to follow the rules that have been handed down to him. The rules, number one, crying, don't, no matter what, don't. Number two, snitching, don't, no matter what, don't. Number three, revenge. If someone you love gets killed, find the person who killed them and kill them. 
So Will finds his brother's gun hidden in their bedroom. And then after dawn, he makes his way to Riggs's apartment building. He gets into the elevator and pushes the button. And when the door opens, someone familiar gets in, someone dead. Will panics, he pinches himself, he rubs his eyes because he doesn't know, is this person dead or is Will dead? Bullets miss and you can get the wrong guy, but there's always going to be someone else who'll follow the rules. Jason Reynolds book, Long Way Down, it comes in verse. And it also comes in graphic novel form. There you go. I hope you like the book. Hi, my name is Kate McNair. I work for the Johnson County Library, and I'm here to tell you today about two of my favorite books. But before I do that, I wanted to mention one of my favorite things about our teen website, and that is all the teen reviews that you can find. If you're looking for your next read and you want to hear from local teens, go to jocolibrary.org slash teens. You'll see reviews and ratings from people all around the metro area. You can search by genre or by tag and find something that works just for you. And if you're a big reader or watcher and you want to submit your reviews to be published on our website, we would love to hear from you. You can earn volunteer hours for submitting reviews, one hour for reading and one hour for writing a review. And you can find more information on the right hand side of our website, which again is jocolibrary.org slash teens. So the two books that I wanted to tell you about today are Aurora Rising and Royals. I'll start with Aurora Rising. This book by uh, Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff is set in the year 2380. The location is space and the mission, of course, is to save the universe. Tyler Jones has been dreaming of his first official mission as part of the Aurora fleet since his first day at the academy. As a cadet, he excelled in everything from combat to logistics. He's a natural leader and Tyler is sure to get the pick of his crew in the draft. The morning of the draft though, Tyler's taking one last flight on his own and he discovers an abandoned ship and inside a girl frozen in cryosleep for over 200 years. The cadet code demands that he rescue her and bring her back to the, the academy, but his heroics cause him to miss the draft and lands him with the crew members that no other captain wanted. And they are a rad tag group. First, he has a cocky diplomat who also happens to be his sister, a scientist who has a habit of shooting her teammates instead of the enemy, a technology officer with a chip on his shoulder, a soldier with something to prove, and a sarcastic pilot who is totally unimpressed by Tyler's straight A's and leadership potential. But Tyler is sure he can lead any crew to success as long as they depart on their first mission. But things haven't stopped going wrong for Tyler yet. The mission isn't exactly what it seems and everything gets more complicated when they discover the girl Tyler rescued is stowed away on their ship. Turns out everybody in the galaxy is after a secret they think she knows, only she has amnesia and can't remember anything. This is the first book in a new series called The Aurora Cycle. It's a nonstop adventure. It's being turned into a movie, so get on the stand wagon now. The other book that I wanted to tell you about is Royals. It's by Rachel Hawkins. And this is about a girl whose name is Daisy Winters. She's kind of offbeat. She has mermaid colored hair, so of course I like her. She's 16 years old and she is totally content spending her summer in her Florida hometown working at this kind of like bootleg version of Walmart with her best friend. That is until her near perfect sister comes home from college and announces that she's getting married, not just to anybody, to the crown prince of Scotland. No longer can Daisy live in the shadows unnoticed. The announcement of the crown prince's engagement to the, an American commoner has all the Scottish tabloids in a tizzy. They've come to Florida to find out just who this fiance is and they are particularly interested in Daisy. Unfortunately for Daisy, she is not so organized. And after some public mess ups, Daisy's parents agree with their soon to be in-laws, the royal family, that it's best for Daisy to join her sister in the Scottish Highlands under the watchful eye of the royal staff. But Daisy can't seem to avoid scandal when a tabloid publishes that she's falling for the dashing young Prince Miles, the crown prince's younger brother, who she's never even met yet. If you're looking for a fun romantic read, Royals is the one for you. Thanks, and we hope to see you at the library.